Hey there kids, we are doing lesson 14 today in module six and we're still working with the coordinate grid and our objective today is to construct parallel line segments and analyze relationships of the coordinate pairs. So we need to talk about these coordinate pairs and how they're related and look for patterns, which is what we've been doing recently is really talking about and making patterns happen on the grid. So let's get started. I'm not gonna use the template uh, right now because the template has, um, if they want us to use the little cutouts from the previous lesson, and frankly, you are not going to have all these cutouts your whole life sitting around waiting for you to use them. So we're gonna talk about the strategies for using the graph itself and basically just counting your way, and it works really well. So use the coordinate plane below to complete the following tasks. A, identify the locations of P and R. So this, at this point, should be very easy for you. All of our numbers are positive. They're going from the origin to the right for the x-axis and up for the y-axis. Looks like we're counting by ones. Always look and see what you're counting by because in order to put your ordered pair, you have to count off to the right and then up. So for point P, we have six for X, and we have four for Y. And for R, we have down here, counting by ones, 11 for X and six for Y. Now we're gonna draw line PR. PR, public relations. So we're gonna connect these two points and it's a line, so you can go past it. You don't have to do a line segment where you stop short. Look for the little line symbol there. Plot the following coordinate pairs on the plane where they're gonna tell us. Put this point, six, seven, six, and go up from four, five, six, seven. Okay, that's your point, S. Plot this one, 11, nine. Here's 11, we're gonna go up but we need to go to nine, that's at the very top for point T, okay? Did both points, now draw line ST. So put your lead there and then draw your line. Okay, now circle the relationship. This is kind of a little bit of a check for you to look for symbols. Circle the relationship between line PR and line ST. So line PR is perpendicular to line ST, or line PR is parallel to. Okay, so these fun little symbols here are showing you the relationship. If it's perpendicular, then it crosses in the crisscross 90 degree angles at the corners. If it's parallel, boom, a pair of L's. So line PR is what to line ST? Here's a line, here's a line, okay? These lines are parallel. So we're gonna circle this one because that's the relationship between the lines. Now, it says give the coordinates of a pair of points. We're gonna, we're gonna give the coordinates of point U and point V such that line UV is parallel to point PR. So here's how you're gonna use this strategy without using a little piece of paper that you slide around. Notice the pattern that we use to create line ST. If I go from point R and I go, one, two, three intersections up, and then I go from point P, one, two, three intersections up, I have a parallel line. I can do the same thing underneath it. I could do it above one, or I could do it below. One, two, three, four, five, how many do you want? So you can make any type of parallel line. Let's go down two, one, two. Well, from any intersecting point, where they cross in the middle, it's much easier because then you don't have to have that fractionally off a little bit. Find where it intersects and go down two. Okay, so the intersections are going to make your life so much easier. Find where those two points are, create a line, 
Well, bam, we have, I need to give you the, the coordinate pairs, but look, we did create the parallel line. See, parallel. So point U, let's call this one U and call this one V. And yours can be anywhere on the graph. It can be above or below line PR as long as it's parallel. Then you'll be using, uh, perhaps it'll be the same X, but it'll perhaps be a different Y because you're gonna go up or down uh, one of these. So anyway, I'm, I'm using this same 11 for V for the X and I'm using the same six because that's where the intersections are and that's where I recommend that you cross over. So for point U, we've got six, two. And for point V, we have 11, four. And we drew line UV, so that's all done. And again, you want to use the same X value as the points previously made, okay? Six and 11, so that we can get those crossing intersection pieces. So it's really pretty easy here. How do you make parallel lines? Use the grid to help you count up or down. Next side. Use a coordinate plane below to complete the following tasks. Look, they gave us some points. Identify the locations of point E and point F. So point E, first of all, what are we counting by? Here's my X axis and my Y axis, but every other one is marked with a whole number. That means we're counting by halves. If you want to count with fractions, put a couple in just to remind yourself what you're counting by. You can use decimals if you prefer to put 0.5, 1.5, 2.5. You can do that too. But since I started with fractions, I'll just continue with fractions just for a few. Now for point E, we have one and then remember three and a half, three and a half, one, three and a half. And for F, we have three, one and a half. Usually when I'm checking things in the classroom, this is when I walk around and I can see if you understand how to get the X, Y coordinates because for E, I'm gonna look for one first and for F, I'm gonna look for three first. And so it usually jumps right out if you don't use the X coordinate first. Okay, we drew our, we haven't drawn our line. Here we go, draw the line. Notice that this line is going the opposite direction. We're usually uh, drawing lines that go up. This looks like a bad sales report. Wah, 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 going downhill. Okay, so we drew line EF. Generate coordinate pairs for L and M. You're gonna put two new points on there such that line EF is parallel to LM. So if you would like, you can go above or you can go below. So you get to choose, it, it does not matter. But notice that you have all these intersections that you can choose from. So you don't necessarily have to use points uh, EF to go up, although you can because there's lots of room on the graph right here. So let's say I use point F and I go up one, two, three. I can put a point there. Okay, well, I need to have two points or more to make the line. So if I go from here up one, two, three, I can put a point there. Okay, that can be, those can be points L and M. Does it have to be up above? No. And do you have to use these points? No. Okay, one, two, three. You can use that one instead. What if you want to do something below and you say, okay, well, instead of using this one, I'm going to go below. One, two, three. Can I do that? Yeah. Down. One, two, three. Down. One, two, three. As you can see, you can have parallel lines on either side. Now you choose which points you want and label them for your L and M. So I'll do the ones that I started with. So let's do L here and M here. So for L, I'm gonna use three and three. And for M, I'm gonna use two and a half and three and a half. And if you wanted to use something like this, you'd have one and a half, one and a half, and then two, one, or two and a half, one half. 
okay so if you have your line down here that's fine you only have to have the two points and then you kind of run out of a place to record your uh, your ordered pairs on the bottom sorry I know you guys can't see that very well I'm trying to flip it around so you can see it better there you go now I have line LM that is parallel to line EF. Now explain the pattern you made when <laughs> you made use of when generating coordinate pairs for L and M. So you have to explain and they give you literally no room. So off on the side here, I want you to write I, what you did, okay, out in this space out here, I placed points however many units. I place points three units away. From intersections on line, here's the important part, EF. So you're using line EF to move away from line EF so that you can plot new points that create points L and M. Okay? Now, Give the coordinates of a point H such that EF up here is parallel to GH. Now, I may have to erase these because I have to make new points. Point G is one and a half, four, one and a half, and up, 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 four. Ooh, look at that. We're going to have lots of stuff going on. That's G. Okay, oops, you can't see that, but there's point G. It's just kitty corner to point E. Okay, now remember, if I need this to be parallel with line EF, then it has to have exact distance, one, two, from any intersecting line. So I'm going to go down here. This does not use line E. It uses below that point. It doesn't matter. Keep going down and just go up one, two. Okay, come up with point H. This will be H here, and now I need the ordered pair. Two and a half, three. Two and a half, three. Two and a half, three. Okay, so check your work. Also, um, explain how you chose the coordinates for line H, which we need to actually connect those points. Okay. Oops. My ruler a wee bit oh it still looks all right it still looks okay so there's point GH and explain how you chose coordinates for H okay well I moved down the graph and I counted up two intersection points from line EF I counted two intersections up from line EF. That is a little sloppy, but that is it for today. Isn't that crazy? It's a totally fast lesson, and you're really just counting the distance between. So I hope this was really helpful. Click subscribe, come back again, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.